Hi, welcome to ToddFun.com and today's video is going to be uh, mostly just a mailbag, it's not even a mailbag, things I've purchased uh, for the pinball repair. Uh, I just want to show some of the things I've purchased and what I'm going to be putting on and most likely showing um, the installation of some of those things, not in this video, but basically uh, showing that service to the pinball machine uh, that you've seen in, in essentially the first two episodes of what will become a playlist on just repairing my pinball machine. But this video is about the pinball machine, um, the Ball Valley Star Trek 1979 pinball machine. I made an order to Classic Playfields. Um, they're out of Canada, um, and Classic Playfields makes reproduction plastics. Now, my plastics were pretty good, but uh, we'll open this up and we'll show you the differences. Uh, some of my plastics were bent warped that can be fixed because the, because the colors were good uh, but more importantly I, I did not like the bald lady that's something Paramount did to this pinball machine they went to approve the artwork back in 79 they're like no no we wanted to have some of the not the TV characters uniforms and the TV characters they wanted it to be more like the uh, the movie that was coming out then and so to for Bally to get it approved uh, with Paramount, they went ahead and, and changed the, at least the plastics and the uniforms on the back glass. I can live with the uniforms on the back glass because they're pretty much their standard characters, but that bald lady on the playfield plastic is, I just didn't like it on day one. And the original proposed plastics uh, had Yuhara, um and like another uh, standard red shirt character lady, essentially the bald lady, but with a red shirt and hair. <laughs> And that original proposed plastic is, is what I really want to see on the machine, so I ordered those reproductions, and we'll take a look at that. Other than that, I'm going to uh, go into some LED lighting. I'm going to show that I uh, got a bunch of LEDs. Uh, not to do like a complete LED replacement, uh, but we'll go into that. I actually just purchased one of every style and color LED just to do evaluation. You know, what do I want? What will work? Will I have Flickr? Will I have Ghosting? Do their solutions uh, that I ordered uh, from uh, uh, Pinball Life actually solve those problems? And will they look good if I use Frosted as opposed to non-Frosted Bright as a super bright? Or there's actually an effing bright. They actually call it effing bright. Okay. <laughs> uh, and I want to test all this. So I just bought one of each and one of each color just to see what mixes and matches best with my game. And that will be a separate video. Uh, showing that, but I'll show you those. Uh, I'll show you those LEDs here as an unboxing, and then lastly, I got another box of just spare parts. I'm just going to go through and say, hey, here's all the spare parts and what I'm going to do with them uh, coming up. That pretty much be this video. That's just so you kind of have a square of where I'm at, and then ultimately I'm going to start slapping all these together in a playlist so that people who are interested in pinball can say, well, I just want to watch the playlist. So let's get started with the unboxing and the evaluation of uh, some of these things at the bench. We'll start off with my pinball machine. That's my serial number, EST12800. So there's about 16,000 plus of these uh, Bally's uh, Star Treks made. Uh, you can go to a, a website, the Internet Pinball Serial Number Database, or IPSND.net, and you uh, can look up all types of information about um, pinball machines. One nice service they have is that if you go to like the Star Trek one, you'll see links to all the uh, manuals and PDFs and stuff like that. Lots of other resources about this uh, machine and details that or it's just an excellent web page. Also, you can upload photos of your serial number and your box uh, and any other information you want to share, like the condition of the box and the location of it and stuff like that. And then other members then uh, view your uploading and certify that you do indeed have that serial number machine and it makes it a no one it basically registers that uh, registers the serial number in the database as as a certified approved uh, machine number that is a survivor if you will uh, and that's nice and I and you print out your certificate and I laminated mine so I can put it in my machine because I'm weird that way on eBay you can find reproductions of, of a lot of the manuals. This is the parts catalog. It covers the uh, the Star Trek as well as the basically identical machines, just different play play features. And it's a, um, and it's a, a Playboy, Supersonic, Kiss, and Paragon. 
it's it's a really nice manual. I think I got each of these for ten bucks a piece or twelve bucks a piece. Um, this one's a nice one because it's got the parts listing. Though most of them have the parts listing in, in somewhat, but this has nice high large images of the different things like the target mechanisms and it has a few details that the other manuals don't have. Uh, it does unfortunately cover bits and bobs that are in different of uh, those different machines. Uh, but it's it, you you get you you can look at the numbers and know which ones are actually for your machine. Like I don't have that. I don't have a spinner. But uh, but you do get to know that there's a short post and a long post, and so it lets you e more easily find the parts that you do need, and then you get a nice, good, clear picture of what it is you're looking for. Um, there isn't really any service information, but there's nice blow-ups in here um, for each of them. Like that's the kiss, and then they'll talk about a few other things, now your general parts list and stuff like that. Um, but it tells you uh, where to locate the different identified numbers um, uh, for the lights and for the solenoids and and, and a few other things like positioning um, uh, your posts so that you can make the game a little easier or a little harder um, so that's that's nice and then in the front it has it has a bit more about uh, about the different types of standard boards that these all these machines kind of shared and the and, and which ones were actually in your machine so that was a, a, a great a, a great book to get. Like I said, you can get the PDFs of these, but I like the books because I like to have them when I'm working on the machines. This is specifically the manual, the reproduced manual for for my machine, um, and it has it goes into schematics. You actually will print out the schematics, which helps an absolute. Um, it, it, well, it's amazing to have the schematics. That's great. In the back of it is just uh, reproduction uh, game cards, scores, amounts, how much to pay for each one. I suppose that's just how they did it originally, but it's the uh, it's the schematics that are so important in this one, so these are just a must-have. Uh, it also has game setup, game features. Interestingly enough, you can configure this game uh, to either be liberal, uh, conservative, or normal. And liberal being fairly easy setup, um, not to mention where you put the posts on the field, but also the game settings um, can change it from a hard game to an easy game. And it, I think it all comes normal, but. I'll probably change mine over to, to the easier settings just so my son and I can enjoy uh, the game so it's just easier to play. This is also very nice. This is the electronic pinball game repair procedures. So this actually has a lot of procedures in it that kind of, and it's also for different games as well, not just, it's also for the different ballies at the time, ballies at the time. Um, but it gives you different types of testing schematic, uh, testing procedures you can do. All you know, what voltages to go check. What happens if the lights aren't working a certain way? What things can you check? Where should you check first? So it's pretty, pretty nice to have extra steps. Though most of the stuff's pretty intuitive for repair. Um, and then again, parts list again. It's sort of redundant there, but it's got better diagrams in here about where the parts are on the, on the, and then and a, a bit more information about. Uh, about the actual parts. So rather than just saying, hey, there's a capacitor over here, it's a capacitor and it's a 470 picofarad, you know, 1 kV. Um, uh, yeah. So it just gives you a lot more detail and it, but it covers different boards that aren't necessarily in your machine. Um, but so a very excellent one to have as well. Okay, my classic Playfield reproduction plastics. Let's take a look at that. Well, this isn't right. I don't even have to go any further to know this isn't right. This is uh, this is the Star Trek 25th anniversary classic playfield plastics. This is not the plastics for my machine. Well, there's a big fat fail. This won't. Even, there's no point in me even opening this. I'll have to uh, contact them and say they they grabbed the wrong box off the shelf. Okay. Well. That's that, I guess. I have to order another one. Just so you know what my plastic should look like. My plastic set is really simple. It's not like the 25th anniversary. I just got these standard simple you know, uh, plastics. And what I don't like is, is I don't like... Uh, we, were, we were supposed to get... I was supposed to get uh, Yuhura your, your here. Um, so the bald lady I don't like. And then up here, this was going to be uh, a red shirt lady. It was actually going to be this lady up here, but repeated over here in the same pose. Um, and those really, th those three pieces of plastic would be the only ones that are different. That and the warping and stuff 
and some of the minor cracking would be fixed as well. So, okay, well, that you know what I'm going to be doing. I just have to order again. We'll show them next time. Okay, we'll save the LEDs for the end. Um, this are new legs. Uh, when I purchased my machine, it had rusty legs. The uh, uh, they were the original, uh, essentially painted uh, like a like a gunmetal or sort of a brownish color, gunmetal kind of color. But I didn't really care for that. I wanted chrome, so I figured, well, I was going to order new ones, and I get nice chrome ones. Um, I also uh, had. Uh, so these aren't even expensive. I mean, there's no point trying to clean up your old legs. Just buy new legs. I get, I got, I, I purchased most of this stuff from um, uh, Pinball Resource. Uh, Steve Young from Pinball Resource. Um, there's links to the fir in the first video um, of my of all this in the playlist. I also want to upgrade the brackets for the legs because I don't want these legs to. Uh, the the, the Bally's uh, internal bracket was just a little thin piece of basically stamp steel with no nut. These upgrades, um, I'm going to try and retrofit them. They're not really designed for the machine, but I'm pretty sure I can make them work. And they have these uh, pressed in captured nuts that are really thick. They'll, they'll make it so you can put the legs on really firm. And then of course, all uh, most of the nuts were missing on my machine. These acorn style leg bolts uh, uh, look really nice and they're not expensive. And so I got a set I got a bag of eight of those uh, to go with this conversion uh, to these nicer, uh, basically four brackets. Also not very expensive, like four dollars or something like that. Uh, and then I got uh, new feet, of course, because the other ones were rusted. Um, they uh, they look like this. They're really nice ones from uh, Pinball Resource. Uh, they have the divot in the bottom, so and they're really well constructed. They pivot. You're supposed to get short ones for the front and long ones for the back, and then uh, also you buy separately the capture nuts. The capture nuts go underneath them, so that actually you you'd screw it in like this. And one nice thing about these uh, these uh, from Steve Young is they also have the capture nut in here. That it's not just stamped steel like the original machine, where it was just folded over steel with some threads in it, which was just lame. There's actually a captured uh, um, um, nut in there, and uh, these will go on like this. And then once you get your level right, then you you tighten up and tighten this uh, to lock it in. Don't put this on the top. Put this on the bottom. And then because I'm putting mine um, in uh, on a hardwood floor in the house, I didn't want any risk. I didn't want to get the ones that had uh, the Teflon on them. I didn't want to get the ones that had. Uh, had there were just different ones and I like these the best because the way they tilt so nice and then they just snap into these rubbers now they're supposed to pop in and, and it's supposed to grip it and then that way you can lift and move your machine around but these don't quite fit they're a little undersized so I'm gonna have to put a drop of that big glob of hot glue in there and then sink them in good and then they'll still work this way they won't damage the hardwood floor um, and then when I lift the machine they won't come off so I don't know why they don't lock in they're supposed to lock in but that's what you get, I guess. I did get some of the parts from uh, uh, Marco Specialties. They have a good website too. Just um, it's a little easier to use than Steve Young's Pinball Resource, but Pinball Resource has got a lot of specialty stuff that's nice too. Uh, but uh, yeah, some of the stuff I, I did get from different vendors, depending on who had what and and the pricing. Let's talk about cleaning. I did a lot of research on cleaning pinball machines, and to clean the cabinet, it's this is pretty much recommended to get the gook and grime off the really bad surface stuff. You don't want to use this stuff um, once you and if you start seeing paint come off on your cloth, uh, but it will definitely get a lot of that initial grit off without so much elbow grease. And you can get this at Amazon. I'll have a, a link for that at my Amazon store, which you can get to at toddfun.com. The next thing is you, as you'll do a lot of research about cleaning. The play field and people say don't use uh, Novus number two it's got some grit in it well if you got an old machine like an old Bally's and and you and there's a coating on those originally there's almost like a clear coat and really call it a clear coat but that's not what they call it in the manual but it's technically a clear coat over the paint and and this is going to have just a tiny bit like a 2000 grit kind of uh, status of, um, for it and you just rub real good and I've seen a lot of positive reports that this cleans and doesn't damage the field if you don't keep going you just do it until the dirt is off 
and that does work. Don't clean it regularly, regularly with this, but this is to you know restore an old dirty machine that hasn't been cleaned in several years, and it works great. And uh, there's also a number one, which is mostly for cleaning the plastics, but that's you can use just about anything for that. And there's a number three, which is a lot more aggressive, and it's not really recommended for anything. Actually, it's it's recommended to put into like a uh, to help a shaker machine sort of agitate and, and, and clean up uh, and polish parts. You could get one, two, and three and use them all. There's nothing wrong with it. Just use them for the right thing. Once once my field is actually completely cleaned and and my aunt comes down and, and touches up the paint, then I'm gonna clear coat. And in the in the first video of this series is my steps that I found that are probably the most recommended way of clear coating an old machine. And I'll probably follow that with the proper sanding and, and, and buffing at the end. And once that's done, I'm going to use uh, more like a, a carnubal, carnubal, I can't even say it right, carnubal car wax. It's sold at some pinball um, stores. Uh, and, it, uh, and it's actually a hard car wax. But before that happens, this is what's recommended in the manual for the original finish for the Bali. Uh, I got this from... Uh, uh, from Pinball Resource, it's probably new old stock. This is what they recommended, Wildcat number 125. And so until I get, my aunt has to visit, which is like a year away, until then I'm going to clean and polish, you know, this is essentially like a polish, I'm going to clean and polish my play field with this to help protect the paint that's currently there. Um, and I'll do that regularly until the painting is done and then the clear coat and then I'm going to change over to that uh, Carnival car wax sold at other pinball uh, part stores. There's a problem with old pinball machines is this this coating that's almost like a clear coat gets cracked from the ball jumping up and down and banging on the play field and these cracks then get filled, these hairline cracks and here's a picture, I'll pop up a picture of my hairline cracks and I want to get that out but I don't want to get so aggressive as to uh, destroy the paint but for some reason this is this is notorious throughout all of the uh, pinball restoration sites that this Mr. Clean Magic Eraser will, with, with some uh, like rubbing alcohol used ever so carefully will take out those deep um, dirt from within those tiny cracks. It won't get rid of the cracks. You're not, trying to, you're not trying to use this to buff down through your paint. You're just trying to use this micro fiberish spongy thing to kind of pull out that dirt out of those micro cracks making it look like it's a clear color again um, without the dark lines. And then when you go to properly uh, sand and, and clear coat your machine, uh, then you'll fill those cracks in at that point in time. Uh, and, they won't, and that way you don't have to paint all those areas. They just, they just look like they look good again. Now, I got this off of Amazon. Um, I'll have a link to it in my Amazon store. And as you know, if you watched my first two videos on my pinball machine, um, I had some missing and broken posts. And I uh, got these from Steve Young. And they look so nice and they look so clean and sharp. I'm probably going to, I might just order, and they're not even that expensive. I might just order 20, 35 new ones. And then if I order 35 new ones, I don't have to scrub and clean my old ones. And of course, I won't do that until after I get the field repainted. I'll, I'll just use these. And, order all new ones after the field is, is, is redone. And then I had this one post with a T-nut. The T-nuts go underneath the play field into the, or sink into the wood. It's kind of a good idea to put a little something on here to keep it in so they don't ever fall out um, uh, on the backside. You know, kind of like a little bit of drop of crazy glue or something so that they stay up in the play field. But then this is then serviceable. You can take and put your post down uh, uh, through the deck and it screws into this into this T-nut. So those will go on. Then I had, uh, I have some broken pins, some female uh, Molex pins. Um, I had some .1s and some .156. I still got the .156 on back order. Uh, and what happens is, is, well I'll get a, I'll zoom in really close on one. Because these things are inside your Molex connectors, and these are the Molex female pins, so what happens is, is, is this is crimped on your wire and, and it's got a little, little spur on the back that keeps it locked into the Molex connector. Um, and we'll see a tool that used a, that little pin at the back side, the top side there. Uh, it has to be pushed down to uncapture it. But this, this front part here gets pushed in and out 
and and after so many years, 30 years of being pushed on, it busts the tip off, so it just breaks off this little curl piece of metal. But luckily enough, these are still sold at pin, uh, pinball. Well, you can buy it at DigiKey and stuff like that too. But when you're buying at a pinball parts store, they have them. So why not just throw a bunch in your in your order list and you have them? And then you just need to crimp them on, and you're good to go again. They usually the plastics, unless they're burned or cracked or old, the plastic molexes are still fine. And especially in my machine, they all look nice. But you do need um, a crimper for it. I looked through several of them. This was about the best priced one that was ratcheting. Um, it, it, it ratches it down, and as soon as you've ratched it all the way down, then it opens up, and it'll do the two different sizes that you're going to need. And w once you strip the wire correctly, and I'll have a link to a re pinball repair place that um, goes over how to use this and how to create your connections perfectly. Uh, it's, it's basically it's pinballrepair.com, I think, but I'll have a link to it. At any rate, once you get this on your wire, and then you get in here and you crimp it down, then you get a perfect connection every time. And as soon as I get those replaced, I'll quit having certain uh, failures with my lamps and my displays. To get these out though, like I said, they're captured inside those Molexes. This is a, this is the cheapest all-purpose kit. There's much better tools for doing this Molex removal uh, stuff. But I, I basically just, it got decent enough reviews, it's cheap. And it, it has uh, a few of your, your standard Molex, like the round version, which goes and takes out the round nap. But the one that I like in this kit the most is it's got a really hard piece of steel on here. And it lets you get inside and gets on the, on the back end and push that little capture down. So basically, this is inside and you can reach up in the back side and then just push on that little tab. And when you bend that little capture tab down, then this pops out. This is a good little kit to have laying around, um, and it has several different versions for different types, and it just makes it easy. Like I say, not the best kit, but hey, you know, it's all you really need. You could get by the dental pick too, but it's nice to have the dedicated tools for that. The last repair thing I have uh, was my uh, my slingshots and my bumpers. I want new mylar around them, uh, just to protect the paint on the field. And I got these at uh, Pinball Resource as well. And essentially it's just a, a sticker that goes on in front of your slingshots and around your bumpers. You do have to disassemble the bumpers to get these on. Uh, I might not use these after all. If I actually do a really good clear coat, I might not use these. Because if I make a really, really hard clear coat, I can. my play time is going to be so minimal compared to a... a you know, something that's in service eight and ten to twelve hours a day. I'm not so sure it really would matter. And that way, um, I really wanted to put these down. But I may change my mind. I mean, they're used so commonly nowadays to protect your field. Okay, this is what I'm a bit more excited about uh, for this video, and that is uh, my LEDs. Gosh, I can't even imagine how many I must have bought. Um, they range from about a few cents or you know, fifty cents at eighty cents to a dollar something a piece, depending on what they do and what they. Features, but but let's hope we're not as disappointed as we were with the uh, classic playfield uh, wrong plastics for the wrong machine debacle. Uh, this is from Pinball Life, and I'm fairly sure they probably got my order correct. And like I say, this isn't to actually replace the actual LEDs in my in my in my machine. This is to uh, <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> okay, I gotta share this. Uh, there will be a a purchase for a puppy for fifty cents. Yes, it is a little picture of a little tiny puppy, and it says this puppy is for fifty cents. We are not gonna send you the puppy. And I just couldn't resist but throw it in the cart. And apparently, this is uh, part number test dash one. And that must be the puppy. It must be their puppy. So I guess I got a uh, a photograph of their puppy. So it looks like it's just a printed on standard paper. <laughs> I threw this in the card for 50 cents. Well, I guess I got a picture of their dog. Well, I'll have to put that up on the wall. That's fun. Okay, what else have we got? Okay, lots of lights. One of each style type of light they got. I bet you they thought I was crazy. They bought buying one of every single light. What they I did not buy the single LEDs. They have they have bright which has like three LEDs. Um, and then they have 
a super bright, which has the uh, super bright panels, and then they have the freaking bright, and then they have flat, and then they have color changers, and then they have what uh, what is called by uh, uh, Todd Tucky at TNT Amusement. He calls them bendies. Um, that's bendies. Uh, let's get down more on them. So, yeah, so they're going to be a, a pack of, of each color. Some of them are for ghosting. Some of them are for frosted. Some of them are uh, for bending, of course. Interesting. Uh, so these would be the frosted ones. So like there's a, there's a couple of greens and a yellow and a blue. I don't know why there's two greens in there. I don't think I ordered two of any green, but well, whatever. I'll have to go through it. Now these are supposed to not have a flicker problem, even though my older uh, lamp driver board in my valley supposedly will have flicker because it doesn't understand that, uh, that, that these are LEDs. It thinks that it's cycling through as far as the feature lights are concerned, the feature lights get turned on and off. The general uh, illumination, the general lighting was on solid and, and, the, and these lights will work fine there, no problem, because they're not being turned on and off. But the feature lights that turn on and off, the way the system cycles, it cycles through a matrix and turns them on and off really quickly if they're supposed to be on. And that turning on and off quickly as it uh, essentially strobes through the different lights uh, would normally look like they they are on. If a feature light was supposed to be on, like you know you win a ball or something like that, if that feature light's supposed to be on, it's actually flashing. It's just that uh, incandescent lamps of the older era, they you don't power them for a few microseconds and they stay on because there's a glowing filament that's glowing and it just doesn't you don't see any flashing or dimming. Well, these LEDs are going to turn off instantly when they don't when they're, when they're being strobed or cycled, and so you get flicker. Now, there's a little something saying that, oh, these won't do that, but I don't believe it. And that's why I wanted to buy these first and test them. Because if they do flicker, if they do suffer from some feature light flicker, um, then um, I got two choices. I'm either going to try and see if I can figure out how to trick my board into doing a faster cycle time, or I'm going to take the lamp board out and I'm going to replace it with an aftermarket one that's already designed to drive LEDs uh, called the uh, Ultimate LED Lamp Driver Board by uh, Alltech Systems. Uh, essentially the same company that made my MPU board uh, makes a lamp driver board that will drive LEDs. There's a switch on it that you flip to tell it your, your feature lights are, are LED. And then it's probably just going to cycle faster through them um, using the same wiring and everything else in the system. It's just it'll cycle so quick that it'll, even the LEDs will look like they're on all the time. Uh, when they're supposed to be on. So some of these, like these are going to be like four LEDs on them, so they're probably the uh, effing bright, I would guess. And uh, looks like they got white. I think they're, I don't know what that would be, green maybe? Now these are the normal brights, and you'll notice the normal brights have three LEDs in them. I didn't get any of the single LEDs. Um, one, because they didn't say anything about being able to not flicker. They didn't say that, and which means that probably the single LED ones do flicker, no matter what. Maybe these won't flicker in my machine. We'll find out. But they're going to be bright because they have uh, three emitters on them. Um, now, there's going to be some of them that are for ghosting. They're rated for ghosting. And what that means is if you have, if you have several lights that are essentially being strobed on your play field and they're, and they're wired up together, there can be some bleed over uh, signal uh, that is just enough to cause adjacent lights to kind of, well, in the case of incandescent ones, they'll just sort of dimly glow. In the case of light, of, of L lamps, uh, LED lamps, they'll probably blink real quick. I'm not sure. But they're supposedly uh, designed inside the lamp here to not allow ghosting when your old machine is cycling through on using the same lines to try and matrix out. Um, a grid out essentially to the light lamp that it really wants you to see on and, it, and that way you don't see the ghosting and I don't know what they would do to prevent that uh, ghosting signal maybe some some threshold or something like that in them is what they might have so we'll evaluate them oh okay these are the effing bright right no wait what are these these aren't anything I can use I have no idea why I bought these these won't fit my machine 
I didn't know there was any that wouldn't fit my machine, but I guess there is. Because these are all the bayonet styles. Now these are the bendies, yeah, as they're called, and that means you can put them someplace where you would normally just want light to sort of shine off to the side because there's mecha mechanisms in the way. Well, you can put these up in there and then you can bend them and then you can get that light really deep up into that place where you want to see it come through the play field. Um, or you can put it over top and, and light some other feature of the play field. And so they've got insulated standoffs on them, and um, and uh, and then you got a little bit more control of where you put them. So yeah, frosted, non-ghosting, multiple different colors, brights, super brights, and effing brights. And there were supposed to be some that were for uh, color changing. I wonder if these are the color changing. No, these are solid colors. So these must be the effing brights that I can't. I don't have any sockets like that. I did not even notice that the sockets were different. Um, I wonder would the light, there's supposed to be some that are just the change, multicolor. That would probably be this one. No, wait, here's the RGB, there they are. RGB, these are the multicolored ones. And yeah, you can see there's a, there's a LED in it that has multiple colors. And it's just going to slowly cycle through um, different colors. And I did, uh... I did want to try those out in a few places just to have a, a color feature change going on. Right, so, okay. I wonder what those ones, let me get out my list here of things I ordered. We have a, a, a Blaze Premium Ghost Busters, that means they're not going to do the ghosting. And then I got the different colors in that, they're about 80 cents. I got mostly one of everything, the only reason I got two of, uh, of some is because I know that I wanted to do a certain thing or two with it and I might as well just get two in case they worked. Uh, let's see, uh, now these are the eight surface mounts number 89. Okay, there's what I, I screwed up. I didn't notice that they were number 89. Um, they're number 89 um, a bayonet style. And, and they're not the effing bright ones, they're just I wasn't paying attention. I was just in a hurry checking these all off. So I'd have one of each. Uh, let's see. Those are all the ghosting and premiums. And the bendable ones. Those are the flexible ones. And let's see. And these are the four surface mount ones. So that's going to be these. They have four surface mounts. But they, they don't call them effing bright here. They did on the web page though. And I thought it was the four, yeah, the four ones were, called, were referred to as F. Oh, yeah, there it says right there. Ha! Huh, the name of the part number has it. Uh, they actually used the word, too. Wow, okay. Effing bright, right? And I suppose that's because there's, you know, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have four emitters on it rather than, four surface mount emitters rather than the, yeah, these are the, I, like I said, I didn't get any single LEDs. That one has got three non-surface mount. Those are through holes. And and these are called like amazing. But these are super brights, and these are like effing brights. Um, so you got an extra LED, and they're also a different type of emitter. Um, but I wonder how that compares to these guys that are like, um, like this is a red one with just you know this is just like a regular bright. It's not a super bright, I guess. Or this would be the super bright, and those would be regular bright. And I didn't get any of the old style. Notice something here too. This is just a white all by itself. And this is just a frosted something. I don't know. So, go through the rest of the list here, see if we notice anything, right? So, if the number 44 or 47 are the bayonet style that I can use. So, I was just stupid and got the 89s for these. Oh, well, it'd be fun to play with, I guess. Okay, that's just the unboxing of all the parts that I have and where I'm going to be doing. And there'll be single videos on putting different things on. There's going to be some challenges making a few fixes to the machine. Um, might as well film them. Hopefully they'll be a little bit shorter than this than this unboxing. Uh, when I go do the lighting, which will probably be real soon, because um, I'm kind of anxious to see how it looks, uh, because I bought one of each style and one of each color, uh, I'm going to document them carefully in the video. I'm going to basically say, these are the part number blah 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 that are got three emitters and now uh, let's look at them and this is what the green and the blue and the whatever looked like in the different areas of the field and then I'll report which ones I like do I you know how do the frosted turn out you know how did these 
how did the super bright, how did the effing bright come out? And you'll see them in the video, and that will hopefully be a fairly short video because it's, it's going to be a documentary of what these different types of lights do for your play field. How do they look? Are they too bright? Uh, where would be a good place to put them? Like, should frosted be used only behind glass? Um, is there, if there's something too clear, is that a good place for frosted? If something is, because uh, you don't want hot spots if you can avoid them. Where is the color changers good at? How do they look? Do they cycle nicely? Uh, of course, then do I have the flicker? Do I have the ghosting? Um, do I need the other driver board? Do I have to figure out some other solution? That's going to be the other video. Uh, hopefully that will help other people who are thinking about tricking out their machine with LEDs know which ones they should get for their machine and where they should put those different types of colors and features, whether they be bendable or where they be uh, frosted and so on. And you might not have to purchase one of everything. You can just watch this next video and you too can hopefully uh, uh, trick out your machine with LEDs uh, the first time through. Uh, so thanks for joining and I hope you're anxious to see the next video on the LEDs. I am. Uh, and then of course onesies, twosies, cleansings, and fixings. So thanks for joining. Thumbs up. See you next time.